Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam Ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd ahabati fillah Continuing on in our discussion in the treaties The short treaties by Imam uh, Fawzan Hafizullah Ta'ala About istighfar, the importance of istighfar uh, he mentions, he says, servants of Allah, there are wordings of seeking forgiveness which have been reported from the Prophet وسلم, which is befitting that a Muslim says. And he says, and from them are, so he's mentioning now those things which are mishroor, those things which are legislated and they were legislated on the tongue of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, meaning that they're the best ways of seeking istighfar, they're the best ways of seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's by following the prophetic sunnah and doing those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. And that is what? What is that? That's the two conditions of the amal. The two conditions of having our good deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are what? First, that we have ikhlas, we have sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the second is that we do it in accordance with how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it. He did it or he stated it or he allowed. And so this is from his prophetic sunnah. So that means ikhlas wa sunnah. Ikhlas wa sunnah. That we are sincere and that we're going in accordance with the sunnah of the messenger. Salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. And that is imperative for the Muslim uh, to make that his asas, his foundation in practicing uh, is, uh, Islam. And so we see in regards to the issue at hand is we're talking about istighfar. So meaning that we seek forgiveness by prophetic supplications, by prophetic means. How the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made istighfar. How the Prophet Alaihi Salatu Wasallam uh, made dhikr in remembrance of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. How the Prophet Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi How he uh, how he uh, made dua, how he supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the ways is that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam used to, he used to say, Rabbag firli wa tub alayhi innaka anta tuwab rahim That the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he used to say, My Lord, Forgive me and turn to me. Indeed, you are the oft returning most merciful. And I think maybe a better way of articulating that, just to let us know, is by saying, My Lord, forgive me and accept my repentance. Indeed, you are the oft, uh, you know, you are the receiver of uh, repentance. You are the oft returning, the, 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 the one who. Who, who, gain, who gives, uh, who accepts repentance and the most merciful. And also in the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Astaghfirullah ladhi la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum wa atubu ilayh. Also in the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is also a fantastic and excellent and one of the best means for making istighfar, seeking the forgiveness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, is the supplication in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I seek the forgiveness of Allah, the one who none has a right to be worshipped except Him. al hayyu al qayyum And I turn to Him and, uh, and, and I return to Him. Astaghfirullah ladhi la ilaha illahu al hayyu al qayyum wa atubu ilayh. And also, the Prophet wasallam said, the master of istighfar, as they say, the supplication of the Prophet wasallam, which is a major beautiful means of seeking repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is, O oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has a right to be worshipped except you. You created me, and I am your slave, and I am faithful to my covenant and my promise as much as I am able. I seek refuge with you from all the evil I have done. I acknowledge before you all the blessings you have bestowed upon me, and I confess to you all my sins, so forgive me, for no one forgives sins except you. Ahabatifillah, this uh, Sayyid Istighfar is imperative for us to memorize, imperative to be on our tongues, and to make our intentions sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and reading and reciting this dua. 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking forgiveness. This is a immense means for all of those fawaid we mentioned as far as the benefits for seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like having your risk increased, having your sins uh, expiated, having your, uh, your sustenance provided, having your stress relieved, having your difficulties eased, having all of your fears rectified. All, there's nothing but benefits from istighfar if it's done with sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it's very important to do it in a mishru'ah way and to use and benefit from the prophetic dua and prophetic means. So at another sitting, we will sit and go through the Sayyidah Istighfar as we've done prior to this in other uh, lessons, but we will do it again and talk about in detail the benefit of just knowing that supplication and we'll memorize it together so that way it's on our tongues. Bi'idnillah ta'ala. And the Prophet Sallallahu said regarding the Sayyid Istighfar, so whoever says this during the day, having certainty in it, and dies before he reaches the evening will be from the people of paradise. And whoever says it during the night, having certainty in it, and dies before he reaches the morning will be from the people of paradise. Ruahu Bukhari. Ahabatifillah, Sayyid Istighfar, seeking Istighfar from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in a mishru way, is... Uh, absolutely imperative for the mu'mineen and one of the characteristics of the believer and in fact we have to strive our best to be from amongst them and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ikhlas with the bat wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad